this does not look very much like a square wave to me and it's only 31 or 32 kilohertz so is the manufacturer cheating saying that the bandwidth of this oscilloscope is 100 kilohertz let's actually try to find that out <laughs> Okay, let me try to explain what's going on here. So the first thing we need to understand is how the oscilloscope works and what is the oscilloscope bandwidth. So imagine this is our device, this is our oscilloscope. Okay. It has a signal input here. So this is our connector and this is our signal okay right now the signal is typically fed into a low pass filter i'm going to explain why in a second then a signal is converted from an analog form into a digi digital form using an analog to digital converter or ADC. Then we have a signal processor who does all all this stuff, who does all this signal processing. So this uh, digital data is fed into it and here is our output on the screen of the oscilloscope okay now an important thing is that every uh, ADC has a specific sampling frequency so let's suppose that our ADC sampling frequency frequency is X Hertz now there is an important signal processing theorem which says that well basically to be able to correctly restore the signal based on the number of samples the signal frequency must not exceed half of this ADC sampling frequency if, and this is why we have this low pass filter here so this low pass filter uh, it only passes frequencies below one half X Hertz so if it passes higher frequencies then things start getting weird uh, this this filter is also called a an anti-aliasing filter so there is uh, such a, such an effect called aliasing and if you are interested I can make another video explaining um, what that is and uh, why is it bad but essentially we need to remember that there is a, a low-pass filter before an ADC and this filter actually defines the bandwidth of an oscilloscope so to be specific the bandwidth of an oscilloscope is essentially the maximum frequency uh, above which the signal gets attenu attenuated by more than three decibel or uh, becomes roughly 70 percent of the um, original signal amplitude and remember the oscilloscope bandwidth is defined for a pure sinusoidal signal okay now with that out of the way let's take a look what's going on with our um, square wave so it's quite different from a pure sine wave so 
this is time, this is amplitude, which we will denote as y. So it kind of looks like this. Okay. So let's say our the frequency of this uh, wave is f hertz. Now, according to the theory, this square wave can be represented as a sum of odd harmonics with decreasing amplitudes. So y as a function of t can be represented as, oh, there is uh, 4 divided by pi multiplier here, um, sine 2 pi ft plus one third sine two pi three f t plus one fifth sine two pi five f t plus and so on. So it's actually a an infinite sum so it can also be represented like this so it is 4 divided by pi sum and from 1 to infinity um, sine 2 pi multiplied by 2n minus 1 f t divided by 2n minus 1. So it is a sum of uh, the main frequency plus its third harmonic with an, with an amplitude of one third, then uh, the fifth har harmonic with an amplitude of one fifth, and so on. Now, in our example, f was equal to, let's say, 30 kilohertz. It was 31, but let's say it's 30. Doesn't matter in our case. So, let's see what's going on here. So, this is going to be our harmonic number. And this is going to be its frequency. Right? So harmonic number one, so our main frequency is, as we know, 30 kilohertz. Our second harmonic, I'm um, sorry, our third harmonic is three times this. It's 90 kilohertz. Then we have our fifth harmonic with 150 kilohertz. Then we have our seventh harmonic with 210 kilohertz and so on. Now remember that the specified bandwidth of this oscilloscope kit is 100 kilohertz. So theoretically everything above this harmonic is going to get rejected. So we will only get the, fo the first and the third harmonic. So instead of looking like this, uh, from the oscilloscope perspective, our signal will look more like this. Something, something like that. And this is actually quite reminiscent of what we saw um, on the screen. Okay, so with the theory out of the way, let's actually try and reproduce these results uh, on our computer. I have found this website which allows you to synthesize a waveform uh, using these sliders which specify the um, amplitude of, the, of your harmonics. So let's start with uh, a pure sine wave like this. The frequency doesn't really matter. 
let's Im let's just imagine it's uh, 30 kilohertz because it does not actually allow you to enter anything above 20 kilohertz but uh, it's actually irrelevant let's imagine this is the kilohertz so now we have our first harmonic with an amplitude of one we have our third harmonic with a uh, relative amplitude of mm, 0 0.3 oh, okay it's not allowing me to do that so let's just use the slider is so the relative um, relative amplitude is 0 0.3333 so let's say it's kind of like this so see uh, this is the picture that we have just uh, seen on paper now uh, in theory, there should be 5th, 7th, 9th, 11th harmonics. You can actually click this uh, square wave uh, button and it will generate a square wave for us. So this is how it looks like with uh, all harmonics up to, up to the 11th one. Um, okay, so 11th, uh, no, our oscilloscope cannot handle it. And it cannot handle ninth. It, oops, it cannot handle seventh. And well, let's say it can barely. Well, the fifth harmonic for thirty kilohertz main frequency is hundred and fifty kilohertz. That is a little bit too much for our oscilloscope. So let's say. Um, and uh, I don't know, it gets attenuated like this. Still something passes through. Well, as we can see, this uh, synthesized uh, waveform actually quite similar to what we see on our oscilloscope um, in this corner. So, and well, this means that our uh, investigation is correct and well the manufacturer does not really cheat so the the bandwidth may be a hundred kilohertz but the bandwidth is only applicable for pure sine waves and in case of a square wave well we can probably expect some significant distortions even, I don't know, maybe at 10 kilohertz. So for 10 kilohertz, let re let's restore the square wave here. For 10 kilohertz, the uh, third harmonic is 30 kilohertz. Uh, the fifth harmonic is um, 50, 70, 90. Okay, so 11th, 11th is not gonna pass through 90. Um, probably will get attenuated like this so yeah this is probably something that we will get at 10 kilohertz uh, if we use a lower frequency say I don't know 5 kilohertz then the 11th um, 11th, har 11th harmonic is only going to be 55 kilohertz and uh, well we can uh, we can even get to a higher f higher harmonics which will improve the quality of the square wave um, and it will probably be able to handle 5 kilohertz square wave just fine here's my final opinion on this kit it is a definitely a very nice toy slash tool for somebody totally new to electronics which also allows you to practice your soldering skills and you can actually get a version with SMD parts not soldered so you could hone your SMD soldering skills as well as for its usefulness as a proper tool mm, it can be used for audio signals and slow digital signals up to 5 maybe 10 kilohertz at best in this role it can actually be quite handy, especially given its low price, compact size and ability to be powered from a battery. However, you can definitely forget about measuring digital signals over 5 kHz, which is actually a very low frequency. 
So for instance, you will not be able to do things like monitoring I2C or SPI communications. So I will keep using it and I'm pretty sure it will come in handy more than once, but I will definitely get myself a proper oscilloscope since I'm getting more and more into electronics. So I hope you like this video. If so, please feel free to like, share and subscribe to my channel. And of course, comments are always welcome. Until the next time, don't forget to have fun!